Hello everybody, this is MCON, and bringing you another episode of our Dragon Age Origins Let's Play. Uh, we're in Arl Evans' estate in Denerim currently, having just uh, <coughs> called the lands meet. Or at least we got the Arl to call the lands meet. Uh, he suggested that we take a look around the area. Um, he wishes us to uh, he wishes to assemble the notables to choose a new king that will unite Ferelden against the Blight. Uh, preferably backing Alistair, who is actually a legitimate claim to the throne. Uh, however, Loghain is still a thorn in our side, and there's much to do before we can confront him. Uh, we should keep Eamon informed of our latest exploits. He can usually be found in his sitting room in the upper floor of his estate. Okay. He, just, he suggested that we go and find and talk to some of the uh, nobles in the area. Hello. Excuse me, I have to dust the Isle's sitting room. Are you from Denerim? No, I'm from Redcliffe. Lady Isolde brought me here to be her chambermaid last spring. I have family here, though. I beg your pardon, sir, but I really can't be seen standing about. The housekeeper will have my head. Good day. Okay, then. Let's see. Okay, there seem to be... Nope, that's not what I wanted. I want the area map. <clears throat> See, my room's here with my dog and Morgan. What's Morgan doing in my room? I would think Liliana would be in my room. Even studying Alistair. Okay. Yep, there's Sparky. Ooh, a book. Very well. Okay. The Banorn. Let's see what that's about. The central Ferelden Valley has always been a paradox. No single ban holds more than a few dozen leagues of farmland, yet together they govern a greater territory than all the Terrans and Arls combined. This collection of independent bands is known as the Banorn, and is the heart of Ferelden politics. No person has ever sat upon the throne of Ferelden without first winning the approval of the Banorn. Queen Fiona, who had the misfortune to take the throne in the 18th year of the Steel Age, Wrote of the Banorn, there have been three wars this year fought over elopements, five fought over wool, and one started by an apple tree. It isn't even winter yet. Who would believe that these same bands, now trying so hard to kill one another, just last year united to give me the crown? Interesting. <clears throat> I'm sorry, guys. I appear to have a uh, tickle in my throat. Hey, Sten. Long time no see. Morgan. This is not as defensible as I would like, but it will do. You called. I, uh, I have a question for you. I am hardly surprised. Actually, never mind. Very well. Alright, I don't think Sten's got wish. anything else to say to us. It's been a while since we talked to him, but apparently there was nothing on his mind more pressing. Alright. Interesting here. Ooh, a chest. With a soldier's silverite helm. Okay. Hello. Alright. Let's check the other side out. Arl Eamon's over in his study. Okay. Let's take a look in here. Ah, Warden. I trust you've made yourself comfortable. Uh, yes. Very nice. Very nice. Good. Because it's likely to be your last rest for a while. This is Elena. She's... I am Queen Enora's handmaiden. She sent me here to ask for your help. Or perhaps the young lady prefers to speak for herself. Why would Enora ask us for help? The Queen. She's in... a difficult position. She loved her husband, no? And trusted her father to protect him. When he returns with no king, and only dark rumors, what is she to think? She worries, no? But when she tries to speak with him, he does not answer. He tells her not to trouble herself. Are you saying that the Queen believes Loghain killed Caelan? My Queen suspects she cannot trust her father. And Loghain, he is very subtle, no? But when and how, he is privy to all the secrets and... Not so subtle. So she goes to how? A visit from the Queen to the new Isle of Denrim is only a matter of courtesy. And she demands answers. 
Well, I guess that didn't go well. He calls her every sort of name, traitor being the kindest, and locks her in a guest room. She... she's locked away. Loghain would allow that. King Kaelin was like a son to him, and Loghain left him to die. Does he love Anora more? Who can say? I think her life is in danger. I heard how say she would be a greater ally dead than alive, especially if her death could be blamed on Arl Eamon. Would Loghain really kill his own daughter just to frame Eamon? We may have no choice but to trust Anora. The Queen is well loved. If Loghain succeeded in pinning her death on me, I'm not sure that's a risk we can afford to take. Hmm, you're right. We have to help her. I have some uniforms. Oh, how I have so many new girls every day. A few more will not cause much stir. I will show you to the servants' entrance. We must slip in and out with my queen before anyone is the wiser. I will go ahead to house estate. Meet me there as soon as you can. Okay, so that's interesting. Rescue the queen. If we can get an aura on our side, we will be, be done. nigh unstoppable at the land's meet. I would bet. Okay, nothing special in Van Tegan's room here. Oh, I spoke too soon. Red steel chainmail gloves. Alrighty. <clears throat> okay. Thank you, Arl. Oh, hey, Alistair. I haven't been here in a while. They've changed the dining room. Something on your mind? I have some questions for you. Of course. Uh, why did you keep your birthright a secret from me? You never asked? That's a cheap answer. <sighs> All right. If you want the full explanation, I'll give it to you. The thing is, I'm used to not telling anyone who didn't already know. It was always a secret. Even Duncan was the only Grey Warden who knew. And then after the battle, when I should have told you, I don't know, it seemed like it was too late by then. How do you just tell someone that? Well, how about, by the way, I'm the heir to the throne? Yes, well, I suppose part of me kind of liked you not knowing. Why? What happens when people find out? They treat me differently. I become the bastard prince to them instead of just Alistair. I know that must sound stupid to you, but I hate that it shaped my entire life. I never wanted it. I certainly don't want to be king. The very idea of it terrifies me. You don't want to be king? Why not? Hello? Have you met me? I... I'm no leader of men. I don't want to be the person sitting on the throne and making decisions that affect the lives of others. That... It just isn't me. And now Arleman plans to put me forward as the heir. It never ends, does it? And for what it's worth, I'm sorry for not telling you sooner. It was a dumb thing to do. Apology accepted. I guess it's kind of a relief that you know now. Let's go. Interesting. All right, so he does not want to be king. Which is unfortunate, because I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to make him king if I want to uh, get Loghain Who's off begun? the throne. Meditations and odes to bees. Oh, boy. O oh, fair damsel of the garden, Arlesa of honeysuckle and rose, I humbly beg your gracious pardon for the offense that here arose. Surely your work is far too vital to be interrupted by one like me. I am in no way entitled to earn the notice of a honey bee. I was a fool to pluck that flower for my lady fair on, for my lady fair on my honor. I swear to bring you dozens more within the hour if you give me leave to try. Listen, traveler, if you would walk the garden paths some spring, mind that you don't trespass, for the gardeners do sting. Huh. Alright. Alistair. Alistair is fascinated by... Nope. I sold his suspicions were unfounded, however. Alistair was not Eamon's son, but King Marek's. Eamon sheltered the boy to hide his existence from Queen Rowan, Eamon's sister. Arl Eamon... Okay. Oh, his health restored. Eamon called a landsmeet with the goal of wrestling power from Loghain and placing Alistair on the throne. 
There is still one character we have not uh, uncovered. And Hyever. Castle Hyever has stood since the Divine Age, when it was not an independent Banorn, but merely an outpost of the growing Banorn of Amaranthine, in the days before Amaranthine became an Arling itself. The outpost of Hyever was originally held by the Els Elstan family, cousins of the Howes. In the Age of Towers, however, Ban Conobar Elstan was murdered by his wife, Flemeth. Whoa, wait, what? I knew Conobar sounded familiar. Uh, Ban Conobar Elstan was murdered by his wife, Flemeth, thus ending the bloodline. Conobar's captain of the guard, Saram Kusland, took the lands and title. Huh. The Kuslins declared their independence from Amaranthine, starting a war that lasted 30 years. When the dust settled, however, it was on its own, and in possession of half the land it had once been southwestern uh, half land that had once been southwestern Amaranthine. However, became a Terranir during the Black Age, when Hela Kuslin gathered the lords together under her banner to drive the werewolves out of their lands, earning herself the title of Terna almost as an afterthought. Today, however, is one of only two remaining Terraniers, making the Kuslin family second in rank only to the king. Arl Howe of Amaranthine was named the new Terran of Hyever under somewhat questionable circumstances, and the fate of the Kuslin family is now uncertain. From Ferelden Folklore and History by Sister Patrine Chantry Scholar. Okay. Interesting. Okay, let's explore the rest of this mansion then quick. Okay. <clears throat> and Shale's over there. Uh, let's see. Who is over this way? We have Zevron, who looks very fancy in his Chantry robe. Leliana. Hey, Leliana! Leliana? This is a nice change from having to sleep in the woods, isn't it? Well, aren't you sweet and attentive? <laughs> ah, ho oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, ho. Oh, yeah. What do you think of this place? Denerim is Ferelden's most important city, yes? This is the seat of power, the jewel in the crown of the king. She is Ferelden's heart. Her walls are strong, but within them lies so much beauty, just like the country and the people. Let's move on. All right. Oh, book. Very well. The History of Ferelden, Chapter 2. Hey, we did have Chapter 1. The occupation was a dark blot on Ferelden's history. Our people, who from time immemorial valued their freedom over all else, were forced to bow to Orlesian rule. The Empire declared our elves property and sold them like cattle. Chevaliers routinely plundered freeholds of coin, food, and even women and children, and excused it as taxation. And for seventy years no lands meets were held, for the Imperial Throne had declared our ancient laws a form of treason. King Brandel was one of those who escaped. He tried to organize the other fugitive lords to retake their land, but Brandel was neither clever nor persuasive, and the nobles preferred to take their chances alone. Ferelden might still be little more than a territory of the Empire, were it not for the fact that his daughter had all the charisma that her royal father lacked. The rebel queen's rule began with a midnight attack on the Imperial Armory at Lothering. It was swift and successful, and with their pilfered arms, the rebels began a campaign against the Orlesians in earnest. But the turning point of the war came when a young freeholder joined the Queen's army. The lad, Loghain Mactir, possessed a remarkable talent for strategy, and quickly became the favorite advisor of the young Prince Marek. The Queen finally died at the hands of the Orlesian sympathizers anxious to curry favor with their, pa blip, with their painted masters, and Marek took her place as the leader of the rebellion. Loghain became Marek's right hand. Mark and Loghain led the rebels in a new campaign against their Elysian oppressors, culminating in the Battle of River Dane, where the last chevaliers in Denerim were crushed. With the capital once more in the hands of Ferelden's, the battle to free our people was finally over, but the battle to rebuild what had been lost had only just begun. Alright. Yeah, so Loghain is definitely a big war hero. Ooh, more books. The Free Marches. 
The Free Marches are not a kingdom, nor even a nation in the most basic sense. People from that region dislike even being lumped together as marchers. Rather, they are a collection of independent city-states, united only when it suits them. In this respect, they resemble the Banorn before the arrival of King Kalanhad. Because of this, the Three Marches have no capital, and what passes for a central government exists only sporadically, a sort of lands meet that convenes only during times of crisis. I arrived in time for the Grand Tourney while it was on in Tantervale. Well, it was one in Tantervale, a remarkable sight indeed. I saw Avar Hillsmen test their metal against Orlesian Chevaliers, riders from the Enderfells buying Navarran cavalry horses, and Teven craftsmen selling their wares to Deventer mages. All of Thetis was on display. All right. I hope all the accommodations are to your liking, Warden. Please let me know if anything is troubling you. Of course, of course. And over here? So many visitors, so many chamber pots to clean. Yeah. Oh, if they keep tracking mud up here, it's going to take a month to get it all out. Mm hmm. Oh, chest. Health pulled us in a love letter. All right. <clears throat> so let's so see. Visitors. On this side, we have. Dun 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 dun. Agren. I got a moment. Hey, sure. <laughs> uh, actually, never mind. Aye. All right, then. You don't quite seem cut out for this uh, fine dining present here. Maybe I'm just uh, biased. Don't those chickens know they're laying for an hour? <laughs> Feast day fish. Fluffy mackerel pudding. Two stalks celery, one green pepper, half a pound of poached mackerel, one small onion finely diced, two teaspoons of mustard, one teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon ground antiven pepper, eighth of a teaspoon ground mace, dash ground cardamom seed, two eggs beaten, two eggs boiled and sliced for garnish. This book found in Arl Eamon's estate naturally falls open to this page. Maybe it's the most popular dish. All right. Cool that we get a look at the cookbooks. Can't talk now, sir. Mistress Agatha would have my hide. Yeah. Scullion. My mother says elves have the clap. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the ex exterior of the estate. Who are we going to take with us? Uh, Liliana, Indeed. certainly. Ogren, uh, and yeah, we'll go with Morgan. Indeed. We'll have our uh, our fun party here. Right. Oh, Liliana leveled up. Oh, we're back in the market district. Interesting. And Sister Justine. Okay. Let's see. Liliana, let's give you some more cunning. Uh, sure. Why don't we give you poison making? And then... We got Lethality, which is... Lethality is nice, and I totally should have taken this myself ages ago. Uh, but the Rogue gets a keen eye for weak spots and gains a bonus to critical chance. Additionally, if the Cunning score is greater than Strength, the Sharpness of Mind lets the character use the Cunning modifier to affect attack damage in place of Strength. Which... is interesting. I think that means, wielding a bow, I can use my Cunning to influence damage more. Which I didn't really realize I wasn't doing with dexterity, I don't think. But, well, yeah, so that's that's how that's gone. But I think we'll take Assassin for now. Uh, getting extra damage against the marked target. Alright. Let us hope that, uh, that we are able to traverse this area safely. Because <sighs> Denerim. Is something the matter? Are you... Are you thinking about Branka? Branka... You loved her, didn't you? I've seen you some nights, staring off into the distance with such sadness in your eyes. You wonder if you did something that drove her away. You wonder if she would have stayed if you had done things differently. She must have loved you. 
somewhere inside. That sodding great dewlicker had a heart clad in iron. She had only wishing. The Templars serve a function. What? And a necessary one. What? If what is only sighed because I was gassy and finally let off a good one. <sighs> Should be hitting you right about now. <laughs> Silent killer, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Interesting. That was a weird sound bug, though. You don't get that. I've, I've never heard... I, not too long ago, we had something like that where just some weird stuff started coming out of someone's mouth. It seemed like that's what happened here, too. So I'm intensely curious as to why that happened. So I've never had that before. Alright. Let's turn in some Mage's Liaison stuff. The Mage's Collective thanks you. Make us smile upon you. All right, five gold. Good. What quest did we complete? Ah, oh, the Scrolls of Banastor. Excellent. And then, what do you have to say over here? Magic exists to serve man and Hello. It's strange that matters can be so tumultuous and yet the day still be so bright. Oh, my pardon. Just thinking aloud. Are you here for the Chanter's board? Uh, who are you? I am Sister Justine, curator of the reliquary of this chantry. <laughs> and pride again. <laughs> it is hard to live up to the example of Andraste. What's a curator do? The archivist tends the books, and I tend the sacred relics. I also search for more to add to our collection, which is more difficult than it sounds. What's so hard about that? A hawker on the street will claim to have an actual finger bone of Andraste. In this city alone, you could make the skeleton of ten prophets from fingers alone. <laughs> nice. Curators often accept them as genuine. I worry about the authenticity of even our most holy artifacts. How difficult is it to verify a relic? When I was a curator of a much smaller chantry in Orlais, I thought that false relics slipped through because of laziness. But the life of the cloth is never an easy one, and that explanation always seemed hollow to me. Now I believe it's the seduction of the divine. We all want a personal connection to the Maker. We want to believe that what we hold in our hands is the actual sandal that slipped from Andraste's foot before the fires consumed her. Faith is of the heart, not of the head. When the heart is ungoverned by reason, charlatans have powerful tools to deceive. Indeed. Balancing faith and reason is difficult, however. And often close to heretical. But I believe that the truth only increases the awe of the Maker and his prophet, not demean it. Even false symbols have the power to inspire. But it seems every year we fall more out of touch with the real Andraste. Well, I found these scrolls in a Tevinta ruin. What do you think of them? Really? Pardon my incredulity. I would like to examine them in any event. Be careful with them. They seem ancient. Let me see. The scrolls are old, no question, and the script. It's written in cipher. Early believers used them to keep their writings safe from the De Winter Magus. These could be authentic. Please, let me examine it. Of course. Here you go. I need parchment, quill, and ink. What was the trick to the cipher again? Ah. I examined your scrolls. I know a few of the early Chantry ciphers, but I'm not fully familiar with this one. The bits I have made out. This may be an account of Matharath's final days, and perhaps more. Matharath? As in Andraste's husband? I know. It's remarkable. The same Mafrath who betrayed our prophet and saw her burn alive in Minrath Rus. If we could get a real translation, well, it could be the find of our lifetime. How long will it take to decipher? It could take months. The ciphers were designed to be difficult for the Magisters to decrypt. Who knows what secrets we can uncover, what truths we can find. Here is all of the allowance I have for acquisitions. Take it and go. A thousand, thousand blessings. Alright. 
Seven and a half sovereigns. It's, it's not not bad. All right, we've taken care of that, which means we need to find our way somehow to uh, Arl Howe's estate. Seems to be where uh, the queen's being kept, I hear. Anyways, this is as good a place as any to end our episode, I do believe. So thank you very much for coming along with me, guys. And until next time, bye all.